Welcome back to Incredibly Useful Exercises for the Double Bass, where we condition specific aspects of our performance in short, stolen moments. Today, we'll explore an elaborate exercise that throws a lot of business at you, forcing us to focus on sophisticated measurements in the right hand while executing very complex technical movements in the left hand. Let's explore the exercise with the logically sound name, Tempo and Dynamics Are Different. I want to thank Joey Nager for his generous support of this series. Joey has been my go-to luthier for over five years. He sculpted my fingerboards buzz-free on both my 1850 English orchestra bass and my solo bass, making them so easy to play, and his tone work on my basses keeps them sounding full, free, and beautiful. Many professional working bassists throughout Texas rely on Joey for fixing and maintaining their treasured instruments. The Joey Nager prize-winning basses are also wonderful instruments. Please visit Joey's website listed below, and if you happen to be in the Houston area, pay him a visit to play his basses and to see how he can improve the playability and tone of your instrument. Tempo and dynamics are different, are one minute long per variation. Expression is maxed at six, mindfulness and control are four, power, velocity, and coordination are three, and endurance is one. We play this for the development and exercise of expressive dynamics and for the exercise of maintaining a disciplined tempo through a variety of dynamics. This exercise seems silly every time I talk about it. It should be one of the simplest concepts in music. Get loud, get soft, keep the tempo. Easy, right? Well, it's easy to say, but in practice, when an orchestra is balancing color, expression, ensemble, articulations, and following a conductor, the first thing to go generally is a steady tempo especially in softer dynamics. So I decided to add this to my workout as a constant reminder that this principle will always need attention, no matter how good I think I am. Also, as a teacher, it reminds me of a necessary physical step in the learning process for every student in every piece of music they learn, the control of different bow speeds and management for dynamic changes in a musical passage. The first thing you need to know is that for this exercise, you don't need this exact sequence of notes. These notes are just a noodle that I came up with one day in my practice. I was playing a scale working on my Sevchik Boeings. I got bored with the scale and I flipped the third and fourth notes just for fun and I liked what I heard. So I kept it, put it on one and five and started playing around with it. And then I discovered that I could use the open G to shift and still pretty much keep the same pattern. The further I shifted, the more complicated it got, and the harder it got to keep the tempo while I changed the dynamic. Over time, I realized that I enjoyed and benefited from this challenge, so I turned it into an exercise. But the truth is that if you want to focus on the bow management relationship between tempo and dynamics, any repeated eight-note group will work. It could be part of your song, a scale, or an excerpt. I don't recommend doing repeated notes. We've already covered that in the growing bow scale. Try to find something that keeps your left hand busy and challenges your coordination. Here we have four different dynamics, pianissimo, piano, forte, and fortissimo. Pianissimo will go from here to about here, piano will go to here, forte to here, and fortissimo to here, approximately. I'm not equating dynamics to emotional expression. I'm equating them to bow speed, like gears in a car. First gear is pianissimo, second gear is piano, third gear forte, fourth gear fortissimo. When I practice my dynamic changes, I want to be agile enough to be able to go from each dynamic to each other one. Pianissimo to piano, pianissimo to forte, pianissimo to fortissimo, and so on. The dynamic changes in this exercise work all possible combinations. You know, a better name for this concept might be bow speed does not affect tempo. Here's my theory as to why string players speed up or slow down in dynamic changes. The first order of business in learning a piece of music is to learn the notes. Fine, easy enough, just do that pizzicato. The second order is to learn the bowings, down bow, up bow, slurs, fine, easy. 
The third order is to solidify the coordination. String crossings, shifts, done. Now, here's where the problems start. We've developed a very specific muscle memory into our body. The next part, adding dynamics, means that we have to add sophistication to our coordination. We have to change our muscle memory, and this takes time. Remember that dynamics are a bow management issue, reliant on bow speed, not weight or placement. If I want to play the passage softer, I need to use a slower bow speed in the same amount of time. But because my muscle memory has me playing it with this much bow, my body will still want to go here, but with a slower bow. It'll take more time to get there, so it slows the tempo down. If I want to play it louder, I need to use a faster bow speed, but my muscle memory again has it in this range. My body will want to change the bow here, but with a faster bow speed. So I'll change the bow before it's time, which speeds up the tempo. So to master a passage, you need to practice that passage at all dynamics. In this way, when the conductor says softer, you translate it into slower bow speeds, smaller bows, not less weight. If they want faster, translate it into faster bow speed, more bow, not more weight. And that's all there is to it. As long as you're not locked into one section of the bow for a passage, you'll be successful. This is why it's vital to practice your Sevchik, Rabat, or Robinson stroke and bowings in a wide range of dynamics and never just at mezzo forte. Okay, let's look at this. There are three groups of two lines. There are six lines total. Learn the first two lines first. And now, here's the heart of this exercise. Before you learn the rest of it, play the first line at each dynamic so you can measure how much bow you need at each level. Put a mental marker at each dynamic so you can hit your marks. Here's pianissimo, piano, forte, fortissimo. I do this every time I play this exercise because the bow management changes with the tempo I choose for that day. I play this between around 80 and 150. Today I'll do it at the printed tempo of 134, but if I go slower, the bow range is bigger and it's smaller if I go faster. So I take a second to calibrate the dynamics with the bow. You'll see me measure the dynamics before each variation. Now that we know how much bow we need for each dynamic at our tempo, we're ready to run the exercise. So here's how we do it. Today, I'll play it at quarter note at 134. I'll use a detache stroke for the main exercise. I'll change dynamics only with bow speed. I'll be playing the exercise with all seven variations. You play whichever variations fit your time budget. If you don't feel ready to play the shifting lines, that's no problem. They're pretty complicated for the left hand. Take your time practicing them and work them whenever you feel ready. Before I play, I plan my recovery strategy because once I start, I don't let any mistake or fatigue stop me, just like in live performance. If I lose the beat or dynamic control or I miss a shift, I'll acknowledge it and I'll allow it to slowly drift back to the metronome and printed dynamics without panicking. Tempo first, dynamics second, notes third. All right, ready? Let's play metronome on. I'll calibrate first. Pianissimo, piano, forte, fortissimo. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. A, pianissimo. One, two, ready, go.
Operation B, calibrate. One, two, ready, go. Piano. Forte. Fortissimo. And one, two, ready, go. Variation C, piano samo, piano, forte, fortissimo. And one, two, ready, go. Variation D, calibrate. Two, one, two, ready, go. Variation E, calibrate. Now one, two, ready, go. Variation F, calibrate first. Forte, fortissimo. And one, two, ready, go.
notation G. Calibrate. One, two, ready, go. And one, two, ready, go. And that is tempo and dynamics are different. My favorite benefit of this exercise is in Baroque bass lines and jazz walking lines. Both of these functions demand a solid pocket and an energetic, creative bass line in both soft and loud volumes. Your ensemble will love it and it'll make the music more fun and interesting for you. No one wants to hear a stagnant, monotonous mezzo forte bass line, and the more you keep it interesting and grooving and joyous in your practice, the more it'll flow over into your performances. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you find tempo and dynamics are different, as useful for your performance as it has been for mine. I present this in the way that I've used and benefited from it. I don't intend to say that it's the only way to practice or approach dynamics and tempo discipline. Adapt these ideas to your style of curiosity, conditioning, playing, or teaching. Practice this and all exercises in the series in short stolen moments, or incorporate them into your regular conditioning routine. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and leave any questions, comments, observations, success stories, or suggestions below. Please check out the incredibly useful exercises series of workout books, available in paperback and ebook on the Amazon site in your country. I look forward to you joining me next time. Thank you, and be well, friends.